Hi everyone, good evening. So good to see you all here. Um, we will start in a minute. In the meantime, we would love to hear where you guys are from. I can see someone from Bilbao, Sydney, Cyprus, Ukraine, Oregon. Uh, with me today is Yotam Ashkenazi. He is our CMO and he will be helping me making this a little bit more casual also. Um, making me shut up from every once in a while so you guys can ask questions. Norway, Costa Rica. Hey everyone, nice to meet everyone. Let's give it another minute and then we'll start. In the meantime, cheers. And thank you all for joining us. Hi, Paul from Canada. Hi, Matt Stacconi. Oh, hi, Thomas. I'm going to just say that this is our first time Emily. doing anything of this sort. So um, we're, first of all, really excited to have everyone here. And second of all, um, be gentle on us. Uh, we might uh, experience some uh, technical difficulties out of just sheer excitement and, uh, and uh, being noobs at this. Um, we're trying to, to go beyond amateur level. So... Which is like Buenas noches, Marco from Guatemala. And Portugal. Jerusalem. Jerusalem. All right. That's pretty global. That's a lot yeah. of fun. And I think we can uh, definitely get started. Right. Um, okay. I'm actually very excited. As your Tom said, this is the first time we're doing that. Um, so let's see. One second. All right. That's my screen. That's me. That's that. And. All right. I'm missing one screen. All right, so here is my screen. Let me, sorry guys, I'll do last minute um, technical stuff here. Right. And all right, there I am on the screen. That's pretty good. Okay, so hi everyone. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Nechama. I'm the COO of Arc Intelligence. I'm also a landscape architect, and I'm very much happy and thrilled to be with you today. Um, today, we are going to go through some of the new Revit 2024 TopoSolid tools, but most importantly, we will review how environment for Revit topography tools will work with them. So, um, it's important to say that um, this is mostly about topographies. However, we will have a similar event to explore some additional functionality from the environment for Revit. Um, so stay tuned for more um, events like that. Um, Yotam over here, do you want to um, tell us about the... Um, we're going to do some kind of a lottery thing over here that you'll be able to actually place the words environment 11 in the comments and you'll get a one year subscription to environment for a bit. So that's pretty exciting. And yeah. So basically, guys, uh, first of all, like I said, thank you for coming. Um, 
I'm just going to say that I'm going to be more on top of the of the chat. So if you guys have any comments, I hope you can hear me fine. I can go grab uh, fetch some headphones if it's going to make everything better. Um, but uh, what we want to say is that um, just because we're super stoked, um, we're going to create a we created a raffle. So for everyone who's in this session, please uh, right now, if you'd like, um, you can comment in the in the chat area. Um, what you see on the screen, just environment 11 exclamation points, Mark. And uh, and at the end, at the end of the of this webinar, we're gonna have a little raffle and one of you guys is gonna win a free license for a year. So uh, an individual license um, with everything that it includes. So um, please go ahead. Of course, we're gonna let people uh, comment along the way. I'm just gonna say that um, if you're if you're watching it from the future, um, this raffle is happening right now. So don't don't leave comments in the future video um, of Environment Eleven. So good luck. And uh, if you have any questions throughout the webinar, please let us know. Um, I'm gonna be kind of like commenting and uh, um, and letting the Hama know that if there's some something specific about a topic you discussed. So. I'm with you guys on the chat, and the uh, Hamai state is yours. I'm just going to say that we can't hear you. I don't know what you've done. Right. Now you can hear me, right? Yes. I'm just going to say that. Okay. So I mentioned that uh, it's past 8 p.m. so I can drink a glass of wine. So what are the key topics for today? Since I know that many of you are uh, landscape architects, but many are also architects or B managers, I decided that I will start with a few words about what does landscape need from Revit? So we all start from the same point to discuss the topo solid and environment topography tools and, you know, let's say talk in the same language. Um, after we discuss that, we will talk about why did Autodesk create the topo solid and a little bit what is the topo solid, some um, key functions that you could do with it. And then, of course, we will wrap up with the new and fancy environment topography tools that support the topo solid and enhance it. So I'm pretty much excited. Let's get started. So as I said, we will start with what does Revit uh, what does landscape need from Revit? And since, you know, Revit was designed mostly for architects and you guys are the pioneers of using this software, a lot of landscape architects found themselves actually learning Revit from the architects, which is fine. Um, but we ended up getting a lot of projects being modeled using just one big topo surface for the entire project. Um, and if any of you heard me before, this is something that I start basically every class or every session. I'm starting by saying uh, no to the one big topo surface. And basically the way we work, just like a building has walls and windows, and it's not just one big chunk of concrete, the landscape has a lot of different components, right? We have paths, and lawn and gardening areas. And as you can see in this model, every one of them is a different element with different materials, different slopes, um, and basically different characteristics to it. Also, building the landscape in such a way makes it a lot more intuitive and a lot easier. So from my experience with my clients um, and with a lot of people that are um, asking me how to model landscape. This is my first tip, and I'm sorry, but I always start every session with this tip. All right. So now that we established um, what we don't want, you know, how we want to model our landscape, let's start to, th to think, what do we want Revit to do for landscape? And basically, we want Revit to do for landscape the same things it's doing for buildings. 
So the so first thing we want is accuracy. And when I'm saying accuracy, I'm saying with materials, layers, volumes, the correct contour lines on our topographies or our, on, our, on our solid elements, we want to know quantities. And a lot of times to get this accuracy, just like you can see here, we need a lot of elevation points and we need a way to place them. So that's kind of where we're coming from. Another thing that we want from Revit, and again, that's the same as buildings, we want flexibility. We want to be able to make design decisions based on our BIM model. So that's something that's really, really important. And as much as Revit is great, landscape needs this fun uh, flexibility. And we're going to see today how we're going to get it from um, Revit using environment tools. The last thing is we need smoothness. So landscape architects are very, very sensitive to how their surfaces look and how our contour lines look. And a lot of times um, to get this smoothness, we need to have a lot of elevation points. And this is one of the things that we are going to review today. How can we manage this amount of elevation points with ease and flexibility? So up until now, we just, you know, set the ground to understand what landscape needs from Revit. Now we have the other question. Why do we need the topo solid? So up until now, we were working, let me open, this is Revit 2023. Up until now, we were working with a topo surface. All of us know it, a topo surface is an element without volume it's not a solid it's a mesh surface um, it can be very accurate but it doesn't have um, it doesn't have uh, volume so the story starts somewhere back in 2016 by a guy named Arek Kashishian and he wrote on Autodesk forum that he would like topographies to be a solid element why did he want that? So by the way, the sketches over here are from his um, Autodesk uh, suggestion on the forums. So, hey guys, if you go into the Autodesk forums, just know that within seven to 10 years, maybe someone would notice your request. But, you know, seriously, he had a good point there. Look at his drawing. What he wanted is a solid element that would allow us to create underground structures like tunnels and to cut void um you know to cut the geometry using voids or using other solid elements and create material layers so these are all things that i do understand why we need them and therefore topo solid is a great step ahead so now that we understood why did autodesk even start to think about the topo solid Let's try to explore what exactly is the topo solid. So here's my favorite slide. The best way I found to explain the topo solid is, let's say a floor met a uh, topo surface and they fell in love. Uh, so their baby was a topo solid, right? So that's a really good way of understanding topo solid. If you know floors, you would know topo solid. Basically, a topo solid is a floor with contour lines. It's a solid element. It's a type based, so you can create different types with different layers and different parameters. Um, you're sketching its boundary. Um, usually, by default, topo solids will have a variable material and we will see in a second what exactly this variable material for those of you who don't know it. And as I said before, okay, it shows the contour lines. So if you already know floors and you know topographies, it'll be fairly easy for you to start working with the topo solid. What did we get from that? Well, just the things that we saw before. We got uh, paths and roads with material layers. We have the option to cut the geometry. We can do sloped excavation, for example, instead of building pads. So a lot of things that came with topo surface are now gone. Um, 
let's take a look at the Messing Insight ribbon in 2023. You can see that we have the top of surface, we have the building pad, we have the split, merge, and subregion. These are all gone in Revit 2024. So let's take a look. Here's Revit 2024. We now have the topo solid. And let's start to examine and see how exactly do we create the topo solid. So that's the part where I ditch my presentation and move over to Revit. Let's start creating the topo solid and explore. Um, by the way, I'm not going to go too deep into how the topo solid works um, because it's pretty self-explanatory. But if some of you really want to go a little bit deeper, um, there is a link in the description of this video to a blog post we wrote about topo solids, 10 things you have to know about topo solid. Um, I did it in collaboration with Nick from Revit Pure. So it's pretty good. Check it out. So let's see how to create a topo solid. I'm, I'm going to Messing Insight, and you have two options to create a topo solid. You can either create it from Sketch, which is pretty similar to how you would create a floor by creating a boundary, or you can create from Import, which is what we already knew from uh, previous versions of Revit with the topo surface. So if you have a CAD survey or a CSV file with elevation points, you can still use it with the top solid. Let's start by creating it from sketch. So just like a floor, the first thing you have to do when you're creating a top solid is to sketch the boundary. So in this case, I have prepared the boundary in detail lines. And let's just go ahead, use the pick line tool and create the boundary of the topo solid. So nothing new until here. Um, the one thing is that let's explore a little bit the properties of this topo solid. So similar to floors, um, you would have to uh, constrain it to a certain layer level, sorry, and give it an offset from level. You have different topo solid types. As you can see in this file, I've already prepared several types. And um, let's take a look at the type properties over here. Let me make them a little bit smaller. All right, so the type properties are also something that we recognize. We have a structure. And in the structure, by default, we will have a variable material just like over here. So for those of you who don't know, what is a var variable material? Um, let's click OK and see what the variable material behaves like. So I'm going to click on the green tick over here to approve the creation of the topo solid. Let's move to the 3D view. And the next thing is to see how I would um, set elevation to that, right? Before we explore the variable material, let's see what happens if I want to change the elevation. So to change the elevation, I'll have to go to the shape editing um, um, ribbon over here, which again, we already know. So let's go to modify sub element, pay attention. You can add points, add split lines, reset shape. These are all functions that we know. The nice thing about, um, about this here is that now you actually have the option to select the elevation base. This was already passable in Revit 2023 with floors. And now in topographies, you're no longer constrained to the internal origin with the elevation of the points. So let's um, try to create a path that connects this, this um, entrance to the house and this road, right? How would we do it? Let's um, select this split line over here and snap it to the road. Select this split line, snap it over here, and then we'll select the middle one, just like that. And this one I'm going to slope according to how, according to my eye, just like I see it. If I want to make it more accurate, I can zoom into this point and just drag it to snap. So this was a problem. I, yeah. I, 
small small thing i love seeing you but do you mind uh minimizing your own camera just so we can uh we can see the screen a little bit better yeah i know you're lying and you just don't want to see me but that's okay all right so here we created the topo solid by the way um, let's click on escape to exit the edit mode. And you can see that I see contour lines over here, but if I click on the surface and go to modify sub element, you can see that the contour lines are gone while I'm in edit mode, which, um, you know, for me as a landscape architect, contour lines are pretty important. So this is uh, something that I dislike a little bit, but altogether, this is pretty nice. So now let's explore a little bit more what is the variable material for people who don't know it? So every floor has a constraint, level and height offset from level. And basically variable material says that if I'm changing a certain elevation, the base of the floor would just remain at the same place that it was. To make this example more clear, let's cancel out the variable material, click on okay and see what happens. So this is a topo solid without the variable material. And this is what a topo solid would look like with a variable material. Uh, the one new thing, however, that we have here is the contour display. So in Revit 2023, we had the contour display here in the site settings window. And we defined it to all the topographies in the file in the project altogether. Uh, however, in Revit 2024, contour lines are um, type based. So we have here in the type properties, the contour display. Let's click on edit. And here you can set the contour lines and you can set what sub what subcategory uh, would set the graphics of these lines. All right, so this is not something new. This was already available with the top of surface. The only difference is that now it is type based. So for example, I can have a type that's called water and oh, it doesn't supposed to have contour lines. Let's go to the contour display and just hide them, All right? Um, another really nice advantage of having uh, a solid element is that it is now able to, I, I can now cut it with other solid elements. So let's take a look at this root ball, for example. I can go to modify, cut, and actually cut my topo solid with this root ball of the tree. And so the volume difference would be calculated um, in this topo solid. So this is pretty cool. Uh, Revit actually added some additional categories that are able to cut the topo solid. So you can cut it with walls, uh, with structural elements, uh, roofs, fascias, topo solid can cut topo solid, um, void element, mess. So a lot of times, you know, the advice if you liked um, building pads would be to replace mat uh, to replace the building pads with masses. So that was a pretty simple ex example. Um, just one last thing about the topo solid. You can see that we have contour labels over here in the massing and site option. We have contour labels and they work just the same on topo solids as if it was a topo surface. So that's something that the topo solid inherited from the topo surface. All right, up until here, are there any questions, Yotan? Not something specific. Uh, if you guys want to, to ask anything, let me know. Um, yeah, I see that you guys keep uh, also uh, uh, joining the raffle, so please do it. Um, at the end, at the end of the session, we're gonna we're gonna announce the, the winner. So, so good job, Nefama. I think it was super clear. All right. So now we're gonna go on uh, to see what happens in slightly more complex examples. Take a look at this example over here. This is this example contains a slightly more elevation points and requires more work 
in regular um, tools. So with that, I think we can transfer uh, to take a look at environment topography tools and understand what they're giving us. So the main thing we're trying to do with the topography tools is to give you an improved user experience and allow you to basically place elevation points um, in a more easy and um, flexible way and to just streamline the placement of these elevation points. So there are a few things that we want from uh, environment topography tools, and I'll show you just how this interface has changed in environment 11. If you already know topography tools, and I'm pretty sure that some of you in the audience have used them before, they stayed pretty much the same, just with additional functionality for the topo solid. So um, the first thing, as I said before, streamlining the placement of the points and let's go to Revit and just see how it works. So after we saw how to create a top solid with Revit tools, let's take a look at how we create a more complex top solid with environment tools. So I'm going to go to environment and I'll start with the topography tools over here. Let's go to topography tools. The nice thing about the topography tools is that you don't actually need to start by sketching a boundary. You could just place points. So all the tools that you can see over here, all of these are just fancy ways of placing elevation points. The first one is pretty much something that you, you pretty much uh, know. Place point, you could just place any point in any elevation. And let's change the elevation to one meter, for example. And the boundary is created automatically. You can also change the base level of every point. Good news to whomever works in older versions in Re of Revit, we are now enabling uh, to create topographies with elevation base that is not internal origin. So this part that you see over here, the elevation base, will also work with all versions, uh, with 2020 and up. So that's uh, one way of creating a topo solid with environment, placing these points. And you can see that there's already a boundary over here. Uh, what other ways do we have to place points? And I'm gonna review that really quickly. Let's go to environment, topography tools. And before I'll place points, I want to review another functionality. Take a look at this main properties thing. So our idea was that you wouldn't have to go between different tools and different um, windows. So you have the main properties window over here. And as you open it from within environment topography tools, you are able to select whatever topo solid you want to use. So let's, for example, uh, use gardening and soil. You're also able to set the constraint level, the comment, the mark, the phase created, the phase demolish. So you are able to do all of that through the main properties window. So I selected the top of solid over here, the gardening and soil. And the next thing I want to show you is how to place points from edge. This is the from edge tool and it does exactly what it promises to do. It just um, places elevation points on model edges. It will work with linked models, linked AutoCAD uh, files, um, basically any 3D element that you have in your file, uh, the From Edge tool will work. So let's just click um, one time here on an edge. If you want to deselect it, you can click again. So let's select. And you can see, by the way, that the um, visibility of the points doesn't look like the points of the topo solid. We kept the visibility of the topo surface because we thought it's more convenient. And also, before I turn these points into a topo solid, I can set the height offset. So let's change it maybe 30 centimeters up. You can see that you can control the height offset as well. Let's click on Insert Points. Another way of 
placing points is, for example, to interpolate. So I'm going to use the insert midpoint tool over here to interpolate between two points. I'm going to click on one point, second point, and then I'll move the arc slider to get the shape that I want to get between these two um, houses. Move the density slider to get a little bit more points. So just remember, the more points, the more accuracy and smoothness you're going to get. And click on Insert Points, and there I have it. So again, you don't have to create a boundary. You already have the boundary created automatically by placing the points. Um, another really nice thing that we added in this version is the option to switch between topo surface and topo solid as much as you want. So for example, let's make this thing a topo surface and voila. Do you remember that? How do we know that's a topo surface? Well, first of all, you can see over here that's a topography. But another thing is that in Revit 2024, you can't actually edit topo surfaces. If you click on a topo surface, you'll get the generate topo solid uh, option over here. But if you're working with environment tools, you always have the option to create topo surface or topo solid as much as you want. And change the type and do whatever you want with it. Um, let's review some other ways of placing points and playing around with our topography tools, and then we will review some additional functionality. Um, so if there's any questions, feel free to ask. Yatam will make sure to pause me. They have other... come up. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, that I'm echoing. So I don't know if it does it still. Um, I'm sure that if it does, everyone is going to comment now. Oh my God, it's so echoing. There's a bunch of uh, uh, kind of like ricochets. So um, if if you switch something on the uh, echo is solved, it doesn't. Thank you, everyone. Um, good job. There was a good question by uh, um, by Blueback, but Blueback, with your permission, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to that later. So if I'm on, it's all yours. That's great. So the next option of placing points, and that's something that uh, any of you landscape architects in the crowd are going to really, really love, is by creating um, model lines as contour lines. Um, so basically, contour lines are the best way to design and describe the three-dimensional shape of a surface. And we like using model lines to kind of reverse engineer uh, topographies and start with the contours, then place the points. Um, if you guys don't know our functions for setting elevations, please feel free to check out some other videos um, or our user guide. It's pretty easy and intuitive. So basically, let's go to topography tools. Uh, first, let me select a nice topography type, gardening soil, click on apply. And now I'm going to use the add line option. The add line option allows me to basically select um, model lines and place elevation points on top of them. So you can see that as I'm selecting the model lines, I already see the elevation points. Let's click on add lines. And there you go, we have the surface. To just complete it from uh, all around, I'm gonna use the from edge tool. Let's do it on zero elevation. All right, if you guys already know the tool, please bear with me because there are some really nice thing, things coming ahead. Oh, insert points, yes. And basically now environment would make it into a topo solid. So um, the one thing that I did wanna say about the from edge and the add lines, you always have the option to offset the elevations. Um, so you can, be even under or above the ground. Um, the next tool that I want to show you is actually something that I'm pretty excited about. I'm going to delete this topo solid altogether, and I'm going to use the from edge tool to just create another starting point topography, I can call it. This is a totally new tool. Let's click on insert points, 
click um, OK. So the next tool that I want to show you is the Modify Topography Tools. Let's click on them. So if you guys used Environment for Revit before, you already know the Modify Topography options. If not, um, I'll just say that this is a totally different set of topography tools. And the purpose is more to like sculpture the surfaces and create really more beautiful stuff, um, usually to fill in the gaps between paths. Um, so it's less of an accurate design and more of a sculpture-y design. With the topography tools, I will have this grid on top of my surface. And the grid represents the elevation points that I will eventually have on my surface. So every grid intersection would actually mean an elevation point. I can change the size of the grid. For example, let's do 0.7. It means that I'll get less points. And remember, the more points, the more accuracy or the more smoothness. I can also change the rotation of the grid. And now um, we have the option to inflate or deflate the surface, to smooth it, to inflate by point. But I want to show you today actually a new option, which is the mesh control. This is one of the most exciting options that we have in this new release. It will be available in Revit 2024, but it will also be available in Revit 2020 and up. So you can see that I have another net of lines. It looks kind of like I'm creating a mess. Um, let's change the mesh density to five. So the grid would be five meters uh, apart. And now I'm just gonna change the elevation of this point. So pay attention, I'm actually designing or changing the shape of my topography just by moving uh, these tiny arrows over here. If I want to see how it looks like, I can click on the Show Preview option. And once I click on the Show Preview option, you can already see what my contour lines would look like. Well, let's say I didn't really like it. I can change it, move it around, click on Show Preview, and immediately I can see the new shape of my topography. Let's click on light changes and click on OK. Um, the, the modified topography tools are really um, sophisticated in that way that you actually have, um, you know, the undo and redo buttons uh, within the modified topography tools. And you can just go back and forth between commands, change the grid, change the rotation of the cell size and see if you like the result or not. Um, let's click on Modify Sub-Element just to give you an idea of what is the result of using the mesh, uh, the mesh topography tools. So this is the Modify Topography. I strongly advise to give it a go. Um, there's a lot of options over there. Right. So now let's go back to the topography tools. And there's actually another uh, really nice ideas of oh, how topography tools, to that topography yeah. tools. Oh. and there's actually another uh... yes your thumb Oops, sorry so a couple one thing uh you muted my me so now i hear myself in delay so please unmute me on the zoom uh, so a couple one more, uh, uh, a couple of questions that are relevant to, to what you're talking about. First of all, Sheila is, is just out of curiosity asking if um, changing the mathematics behind the topo surface versus top of solid, um, because it's a mesh, is it uh, easier or harder to implement in the modified topography? Um, that's a good question, as it is. I didn't understand the question so much, so. So I, I think what uh, what he she is trying to, to ask is um, because we're now dealing with a mesh versus just um, uh, elevation points, individual elevation points, is it uh, easier or harder to to control? But hey, shall I if I if I explain it bad, please uh, rephrase the question. 
There was a couple um, more that I was interested. So that, that's actually a question that I had in mind before Revit released the 2024 version. I was really afraid that it would be too heavy on the computer. So I have to say that um, the performance of the Topo Solid is a lot better. For example, if you're working with Revit 2021 with floors, Topo Solid performs a lot better than that. Um, for us as programmers, or not for me, but for our programmers here in Arc Intelligence, it was really hard. But what we were trying to do is to give you, to give the end user the experience of doing it like easy breezy. So combining um, good performance from Topo Solid from Revit and you know good performance of environment tools, you're not supposed to feel the difference. I hope that answers the question. Um, Yotam, you are now muted. This is, this was my fault right now, sorry. Um, Eric is also asking, uh, has anything changed in regards to using splines or do we still need to convert them into polylines slash curves? You might go into that right now. So, I, um, I so from uh, my, my last experiments, um, splines are still not the most friendly element in Revit and I would still recommend converting them to, to uh, curves. Um, if you guys don't know, then we have this um, convert spline option that allows you to just design with splines and convert them into curves. Um, Ilya, if you're in the chat and I'm wrong, then please feel free to correct me. <laughs> yeah, but my last experiment said that, yes, yeah, splines are still not the friendliest thing. All right, so um, let's hold off on the questions. I'm pretty excited to explore another new functionality that we added to this version. So since Topo Solids work with a boundary, we are introducing a new concept, and this is the concept of reference surfaces. So I know it might sound very complicated, but don't worry, it's pretty simple. So what is the concept of a reference surface? Let's take this topo solid that you see over here, click on it and go to modify topography tools. So essentially the concept of reference surface means that you can place elevation points outside of the boundary of the topography which is pretty cool because it means that you can edit any shape you want with just a few points. So although before I showed you examples with tons of points, sometimes the geometry can be pretty simple and we can control a very complex shape with only two floors, two, two points. So the first thing is that this reference surface, of course, it only lives in the secret world of the edit topography tools. Don't try to find it anywhere else. If you created a surface with environment topography tools, that's where you'll have this reference surface. And there are a few other reasons why this is a really good idea, not only because it's easier to work like that, but also because it makes it a lot easier to make changes to your design. And as architects, landscape architects, B managers, you all know that making design changes is the most time consuming thing. So let's see an example, all right? Let's say that I wanna change the boundary of this top of solid. And I'm gonna use native Revit edit sketch tools. First thing you wanna know is that if you're using a reference surface and you wanna edit the boundary with Revit native tools, you would not have the reference surface anymore. So if you want to maintain your reference surface, you have to use environment topography tools in order to edit the boundary or anything else. So let's say that I'm okay with removing my reference surface. And now I'm just going to edit the boundary of this topo solid, right? Remember this topo solid already has slopes and elevations. And I don't know, I just wanted to add this piece to my boundary. Let's click on the green tick to finish. And let's see what happened now. So once I added new lines to my boundary, 
the entire toposolid dropped down and lost its original height. All right, so that's really annoying and it will make me have to design the entire elevation again. So I'm going to go backwards a few steps and show you how it can be done with environment topography tools. So I'm going to select this toposolid and instead of editing the sketch over here, I'm going to go to topography tools, edit sketch. Uh, by the way, we might extend this functionality in the future. We're just getting started with Revit 2024 and usually we release a new version every once in a while. So hold on to that. But in the meantime, if I go to the edit sketch through the topography tools, and now I'm going to do the same thing again over here. I'm just going to change the boundary. Having this reference surface in the file, click on finish, allows me to maintain the same slope and elevation. So that's pretty nice. But there's another thing that you can actually do with the reference surface. So Let's say that you have a really nice and complex design, including multiple um, floor finishes and you know a lot of shapes. Then you would probably want to have the same plaza with the same slope, the, the entire plaza with the same slope, but a lot of different toposolid elements. So in that case, you could design flat elements and design the elevation as the reference surface in just one of the surfaces. And then let's take this flat element over here. Let's go to topography tools. And now I can actually use the match reference surface to get the elevation from this surface over here into this triangle. Insert points, click on finish. And let's do that again with this surface, topography tools, match reference surface. Let's copy the reference surface from this uh, blue surface over here. By the way, you have an a height offset. So if I want, I can make it maybe um, one meter higher. Insert points, click on finish. And there we have it. Everything in the same reference. Another really thing, a really nice thing about having a reference surface and a boundary separately is that it actually allows you to play around with the boundary without really caring um, where your reference surface is. And that's what we saw before, but there's another functionality that we added to our algorithms. And that is that, let's go to edit sketch over here. I can actually edit my boundary even outside the elevation points. And in that case, environment would make an educated guess as to what is my slopes, what are my slopes and elevations. So let's click on finish over here. And you can see that environment gives me, give me a few options, either to get back within my boundary or to extrapolate and make a guess of what is the elevation. So you can see the performance of that could be varied uh, according to the geometry you're working with, but essentially it means you don't have to hold back as you're designing the surface. Um, a few things that are important to know about using uh, topography tools. If you do override graphics in view by element, then you would probably lose them if you use topography tools. Also, you might lose the hosts. Again, these are stuff that we're just starting to work on and I'm sure they will improve on time. But in the meantime, I would recommend overriding graphics by categories in every view. So that would be a lot better. All right. Um, for those of you who don't know environment tools, I'm going to show you um, another tool of the topography tools, another really nice way of placing elevation points. And after that, I'm going to go to the last feature that we added. And this is a completely new feature. So if you're doing site design, landscape architecture, please bear with me just a little bit more. Um, unless you, Tom, do you want to pause for another um, raffle? Raffle um, pause? So yeah, sure. Um, again, I apologize for the for the echoing. So. 
two things. Um, guys, if you if you're interested in a in an annual environment for event license and individual license, please comment uh raffle in uh comment environment eleven exclamation mark in the chat. Woody, there is no no point in doing it um three or more times. Uh, we're just gonna pick up uh one. Uh, <laughs> But something else, but there is a couple of good questions. So I also apologize for the echo. We will figure it out by, by next time, I promise. Um, Paul is asking, uh, could the reference surface be a, a link to, uh, to a civil CAD file? So can we use yeah. uh, a, 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 um, a That's definitely on our roadmap. Um, since we just invented the concept. Well, we didn't just invent the concept of a reference surface. If you use the shape by topography before, it's kind of the same, but, and, and in this, in the shape by topography in earlier versions of Revit, you could uh, take a surface from Civil 3D and use it, uh, although you had to do it through environment. Uh, but yeah, that's definitely something that we have on our roadmap. Oh, you're done, you're muted. I know, I know. If, if we're already talking, um, uh, there's a couple more. Uh, Yakir asks, can I use shape by topography uh, for floors on this ref reference surface? So is this possible? It's we didn't really go really into the shape by topography yet. So actually, okay, that's a really great question. And that's actually a topic that I forgot to talk about. So let's talk about that. Um, so first of all, yes, you can. You can use topo solids as um, you can use topo solids as topographies in the shape by topography, and there's a reason why we extended the functionality to Revit 2024. So in Revit 2024, you don't have subregions anymore, but um, you have another thing that's called subdivision. And the subdivision, let's draw one really, really quickly, is a really nice element that just lays nicely on top of the topography. And the one uh, disadvantage that this one has is that it doesn't have a negative thickness and it has a minimum thickness of, I think, uh, two millimeters or maybe even less. But it cannot be flat on the same elevation as the surface, and it cannot go um, a little bit deeper. So for that reason, we actually maintained the elevation, the function of shape by topography. And let's see why it's good. So let's take a floor now, a regular Revit floor, and just draw a floor on top of this uh, surface. Uh, maybe let's... Turn it around a little bit to make it nice. And let's make it a playground paving. So this floor is flat on zero elevation. You can see it overlaps. That's where it is. Let's select both the floor and the topo solid. And let's go to environment, shape by topography. Now, that's the nice thing. First of all, shape by topography recognizes the topo solid as a topo surface. But we also added the option to join geometry. So as I said before, solid elements can cut the topo solids. And now we can actually create the effect of a path going into the uh, topography. So let's leave the join geometry option over here and let's make the floor maybe 10 centimeters above the topo solid. Click on OK. In environment, we just automate the process of modify sub-element place this floor on top of the topo solid. And if I, one second, let me just boot Revit back again. So if I, sorry, I want to isolate this topo solid over here. There you go. So once I isolate the topo solid, you can see that it actually uh, created this excavation um, within, oh, that's why my bar was down. Okay, so it created an excavation within the topo solid. Let's bring it back again. And if you're using floors as your um, path elements and you want to see contour lines, don't worry, you always have the slab contours option. From previous versions of environment, you can just click on slab contours, add this slab, and use model lines as contour lines. 
on, uh, on this slab. So thanks, Yakir. That's a really good question. Um, Can I have one more? Just one from yeah. the beginning. Of course. So blue, just blueback, blueback 405 asked, um, is it possible now to put curbstone attached to the topo solid? So it's in it's regardless of environments for rabbits, he's asking, it was still an old question from the from the previous chapter, we can call it. All right, so yeah, that's a, that's a good question. So still uh, curbstones on uh, topo solid behave just like we knew them on floors. So unfortunately, um, um, the the floor um, the floor slab edge still doesn't really work well with complex geometry. So technically, it does work with topo solid, but it doesn't work well with complex geometry. And this is why we are still using railings as the best options for uh, curbs, even with the topo solid. So in that sense, the same behavior that you know from floors in other versions of Ver uh, Revit is now translated to be uh, the same behavior of topo solids in Revit 2024. Uh, what do you say, Atam? Do we have time for a few more workflows? Yeah, sure. I would love that. I think, right. I think everyone would too. Thanks. Okay, so before I'll get to the final um, final new feature that I really want to show you guys, I want to show you just uh, one more workflow with the topography tools. And um, that's, again, something that I really, it's a workflow that I really like, and it explains really well the concept of why do we streamline the placement of points. So let's say that along this path that I have over here, I want to actually create a swell or a ditch or an element to drain water. Let's see how easy it would be to create with environment topography tools. I'm going to go to topography tools. And as always, I'm going to start with the from edge tool. I'm going to select the chain option to make it really easy for me to select um, the entire edge. By the way, pay attention, you can also select contour lines from topographies as edges. So I'm going to give it a height offset of, let's say, negative 10 centimeters over here. And you have to give the height offset before you click on insert points. But if you already did, you have the undo and redo buttons over here. Let's move to top view. And I'm going to click on escape now. And anytime you click on escape in the topography tools, you're going to be in the defaultive selection mode. So you can easily select elevation points. I'm gonna drag to select all these points. Once I select points, I have all these options to delete, copy, or move. So I'm just gonna copy these points and make them as if they're the, the other side of my um, drainage ditch. I could, um, if I designed it before, I could use maybe detail lines to pre-design the shape, the width, or whatever. But for now, let's do it just freely. So now I have both sides of the ditch, but it's still pretty much flat. And that's the last tool that I want to show you. Uh, today, although we have a few more tools in the environment, that's the slope path tool. So the slope path tool, let's click on that, allows me to select a first point, and then you can see that I have a vector. You can see this pink vector on my screen. Once I click again, I'm actually placing a row of points, and this row of points would have a specific predefined slope. I can either define the slope by start and end elevation over here, or by just setting the slope. And don't worry, this would work with whatever um, units you guys are working with. So let's give it negative 10%. And you can see immediately that I get the indication of what is the end elevation. Again, if you already know environment for Revit, you can see that that's the same functionality that we're maintaining and improving from one version to another. Uh, so I created the slope over here. Let's go to 3D view and just see what it looks like. You can see already that there's a slope. 
let's go back to top view and do the same thing over on the other side. Click once, get the vector or the direction, click again, and just set the slow percentage that I want. Again, whatever um, units you're working for your slope. Insert points. So now I have the slope at the beginning and at the end of my drainage ditch, but I actually don't really want to um, have to go over and start to create too many drainage um, paths like that. So instead, I'm going to use a tool that I showed you before, the insert midpoint, to really add the missing data throughout my ditch to interpolate between these two points. Let's move the density slider to get some more points over there. Click on insert points and click on finish. So that's a workflow that I really like. It really shows how we can switch our thinking from, you know, designing every contour line or placing every point to kind of think of the strategy of what do I want my points to do? Do I want my points to create a slope? Do I want my points to be on an edge? And again, everything works with a topo solid. So the one thing that's really important, and as you can see over here, this is still a regular topo solid. If you're sharing your file with someone who doesn't use environment tools, that's okay. He can still, he will still be able to edit the topo solid. He won't have the reference surface, etc. But the elements that you create using environment for Revit are just regular Revit elements, which is pretty important. And all right, so if there's no questions, I want to show you one last uh, new feature, one last workflow, and I'm going to start a new file for that. It's good, 3D view. So, um, in previous versions of Revit, I don't know if a lot of you guys know, but Topo Surface had a really nice feature to it. And the feature was that if you had <clears throat> a surface in the existing phase and another surface in the new construction phase, just like I have over here, you would be able to get the cut and fill calculation for each and every design element. And remember what I said at the beginning, we're not designing one big surface, we're designing a lot of different design elements. So this functionality of the topo surface really allowed us to um, work freely with our design, change it, move it, um, use different materials, different layers. And as long as we have a topo surface under every part, we could very easily get the cut and fill schedule of the entire project, and it would be very accurate. Now in Revit 2024, this functionality has slightly changed because we have few solid elements with a Boolean operation between them. So let's explore the functionality in Revit 2024. I'm going to go to Environment Topography Tools, and I'm going to create an existing ground surface. So my existing ground surface will be in the existing phase. Let's change it to existing phase and it will be demolished in the new construction phase. So let's just create it by um, placing points. Let's do two on zero and I'm gonna give a negative two meter elevation uh, to the other two points over here. And you know what, let's move them. So let's say that this is my existing surface. It doesn't really matter how I created it as long as it's defined in the existing phase and demolished. Click on finished. And now you're not going to be able to see it in this view because of the view filters. So let's going to change, let's change the phase filters to see all. All right, so I have an existing surface. Now, let's say that I'm working in my methods, designing different design elements. Let's go to topography tools, and this time I'm gonna stay in the new construction phase. And I'll create um, an 
a design element. I'm gonna create a top solid that is all the way above um, this existing topography, let's say one meter over here and two meters, sorry, two meters over here. One, two, click finish. And now I'm gonna create another new design element. So this is my proposed design, right? Let's go with the from edge and insert points, maybe slope path. So maybe I wanna have something that slopes um oops sorry i'm editing the old one let's create a new one sorry from edge and let's use this slow path to create something that slopes let's say five percent up you can see the elevation that i get here let's do another thing sloping five percent up insert points let's go to the main properties and make it a gardening soil area right okay so in this example i have my existing ground and two design elements as you can see i designed them higher than my existing ground so in the new revit 2024 since we're doing a boolean operation between two different elements we have additional limitations to the cut and fill calculation. And let's review these limitations. So what do I need in order to have this cut and fill calculation work? It would only work if both topo solid types, the existing and the new one are the same type. So we don't have that in this case. It will only work if they're the same uh, thickness, the, the type are, is in the same thickness. We don't have it here either. It would only work if it has the same boundary and the same constraint level. Again, all of these are different over here. And it has the same, um, the same uh, offset from level. So essentially, if you want to use the graded region feature to get the cut and fill, you would have to use the one big surface um, option. And since we don't like to use the one big surface option because it doesn't represent the way landscape design looks, uh, this limitation is, well, very limiting. So in the new Revit 2024, um, to help our clients get the good, the accurate cut and fill calculations, we actually added an additional feature and this is this parameter that would be over here. So anytime you select a topo solid, and as long as you have two topo solids from different phases that are overlapping each other, you will have the calculate earthwork parameter over here. And you'll be able to click on it to activate it. And now you can see that I have the cut and fill calculation for each of these topo solids. This will be under the dimension um, section in the properties. And again, let's take a look at what the cut and fill calculation in Revit native looks like. Obviously, you can see that there is a cut over here. But if we take a look at it, then the proposed design does not cut the existing topo surface. And again, that's the limitation of having solids with a Boolean operation. And this is why we added this new feature, new parameter in our file. Also, this would work on any topo solid. So even if you're creating it not with environment to tools, just let's say you have this, I don't know, circle over here, go to modify sub elements, whatever topo solid in the new construction phase you're creating, you can have the calculate earthwork option, turn it on and get the exact um, earthwork calculation. Also, um, let's remember this number. So for example, uh, 1,943, right? Let's create a wall on top of this uh, surface over here. And let's use the modify option to cut the volume of the wall from the topo solid. This would also be reflected um, in the earthwork calculation. So 1937, let's take this off. 
one nine four three. So you this would this would also uh, account for any voids or any cuts that you're making to the solid, any boolean operations that you will make on the solid. So now just to wrap it up, I can go to the schedules, create a new schedule. Let's go to top topo solid over here. Click on OK. And these new parameters would also appear in the schedule options. So you have earthwork fill, earthwork uh, net, cut and fill, and earthwork cut. So let's place all of them over here. The nice thing is that you can actually assign a comment or a name to every top of solid uh, um, um, element. And that allows you in the schedule to really control on how every design element behaves. In this case, we'll just show the net uh, cut and fill. So let's click on OK, create the new uh, schedule. Let's go to the sorting grouping, show grand totals, and make sure that the net cut and fill will give us the total calculation of the schedule. Click on OK, and there you go you have a cut and fill schedule even when using separate design elements on top of an existing phase. Um, Yotam, if you're trying to talk, you're still muted. I'm not, I'm not trying to talk. Um, All right, how are you? I'm great, how is it going? Do you still have your voice? Ah. I'm still pretty much excited. I'm looking forward to having all of you guys trying this new environment version. It was actually released a few minutes before this session. So if you already have environment and you'll open Revit now, you'll have this pop-up message um, with a video that shows you what's new with environment for Revit and you can update and, you know, we love to hear your feedback um, and hopefully you enjoyed yeah. this session. Now, now is the time for any one last of you that wants to join the raffle. I will, in, I will give you two more minutes to comment environment 11 exclamation mark. It has to be just that. Uh, so make sure you, you spell it correctly. Um, Meanwhile, if you have also any additional questions, please let us know. If you would like to hear about environment in general, we, we welcome you to follow our uh, different social media pages. They're right down in the description below. Um, please subscribe to our to our channel. But furthermore, uh, please try our tools. We You get 30 days uh, for, for free uh, to try if you guys are students and uh, you're within your um just any sort of uh education uh we do provide also uh licenses for for students for free um so people... we have arcintelligence.com free trial yeah um i can also post that below um people of ukraine we 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 feel your pain um and most of our um programmers uh reside in the ukraine so um if you guys are there we hope to help you rebuild your beautiful country as soon as possible. Um, and you also get uh, environment for free. Um, just contact us and mention um, free license for, for Ukrainians or Ukraines. Um, and, and yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead um, and... Uh, ah, Pavel asked what about curbs on Topo Solid? So Pavel, we can uh the can answer that. Meanwhile, I'm gonna I'm yeah, gonna do we my just talked about thing. it, not I also think so. I also remember you mentioning that um uh, it's pretty much the same and it's in the process. But hey. Well we have the great paste curve feature. It still works with um with railings and it just automates it. And I invite you to explore our user guide to see how to use our paste curb um, option. Let's go to the user guide um, because that's a totally different topic, but don't worry, we'll definitely um, have another um, webinar uh, to talk about that. In the meantime, you do have 
a really nice video that Odette from our team created to uh, help you understand how the paste curve tool works. And it works on top of solids just as it used to work on floors. So that's the answer. And so the winner of uh, the, the REPL, if you guys are interested to know, is I'm going to spell it in the chat, but it's Eha Yakobi. Um, I'm going to write it down right now. So congratulations. I hope I didn't butcher your name. Um, Eha, Yak Eha Jacobi. Um, Jacobi. Um, please send us an email. Uh, you can send it to contacts. I'm going to write it right now. Uh, contact, contact at arcanintelligence.com. You can go, uh, you can either go to contact us or just contacts at arcintelligence.com. These are the two ways. So yeah, hi, Jacobi. Um, if you, if you hear that, please, please contact us soon. Um, something else I will add. So for all of you guys who didn't, uh, win the, the free annual, um, uh, license seat for a year. We, you can also use that exact uh, promo code environment 11 exclamation mark and you'll get 10% off um, any of your licenses. It will be valid for two months. So you'll have time to, to try to try environment for 30 days for free and then choose to purchase it. Um, but people of the future, if you're trying to use that code and it's let's say June and you can't do it, then too bad, I'm sorry. Nechama, you did good. You did great. Thank you so much. Okay. And thank you, everyone. I really hope everyone enjoyed. Um, thanks to everyone who joined us today. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you for showing up. Special thank you to all the people out there that I could recognize their names from the chat, um, like uh, Paul Aville, like um, Emily. I don't remember everyone, anyone, uh, any that I saw at the beginning, but thank you to all and hopefully you enjoyed. Yeah, have a good day, have a good morning, have a good night, uh, wherever you are and see you guys next time.